Welcome everyone to my review of IDW Sonic issue 59. It has been a while, unless you've been watching my videos back to back. If you're new to this channel, welcome! Hope you like what you see, and please subscribe for future videos. I have some big things down the line. Anyway, back to this review. As always, I'll briefly recap what happened last time, and from this point forward, there will be spoilers. Previously on Urban Warfare, the new Diamond Cutters consisting of Tangle the Lemur, Whisper the Wolf, and Lanolin the Sheep fell into a portal and wound up in some out-of-face dimension. There, they were able to work through their issues and plan to help Sonic by gathering as much intel as possible while in their current state. Meanwhile, Sonic himself received reinforcements in the form of Tails, Amy, Silver, and Blaze. They discover that Eggman City is powered by a number of fake Chaos Emeralds and headed towards the central tower to deal with them. En route, they noticed a loud explosion, caused by the recently arrived Team Dark. Rouge greets Sonic and Tails while she, Shadow, and Omega are on top of a pile of Badnik parts. They're soon joined by Silver, Amy, and Blaze. Uh, Silver? Got an explanation why Blaze is upside down? Rouge explains she's not here to help the group. She brought along Edgy McHedgy and Destructobot to see what they can do about this place. And if she just happens to stumble upon treasure in Eggman's vault, that'd be a nice bonus for her. Team Dark leaves the others because they would only slow them down. Good job, Rouge. You just insulted Sonic. Don't let it get to you, dude. You got more important things to worry about, like Eggman greeting his visitors on the PA system. He brags about how his City of Tomorrow can self-repair and replicate, and that it's useless to wreck the building since more will take its place. Which would explain why he allowed the Badniks to tear down that building to get to Sonic last time he was here. Eggman then decides to unleash the Welcoming Committee in the form of Shadow Androids. The good old Doc is sitting in the tower enjoying the show, complete with popcorn. Unbeknownst to him, the new Diamond Cutters have entered his command center, still in their invisible out-of-phase state. Before they can look for anything useful, they witness the battle with the Shadow Androids. Seeing the very things that killed their own team, Whisper breaks down. Yeah, we all saw that coming. Tangle promises that history won't repeat itself. She's right, Whisper. The androids are fighting game characters this time, meaning they have Sega plot armor. This doesn't mean the fight won't be easy. Being based off Shadow and too numerous to handle, Sonic and his friends make a run for it. Their best shot for taking down the androids is to work with Team Dark. Shadow reaffirms that the androids' strength lies with numbers, and they can be easily manipulated. Team Dark just needs to get to a better position to strike back. Sonic's group arrives to give them some breathing room. Most of them. Omega is soon swarmed and brought down. Oh, I hope we don't have to rebuild them again. With the androids advancing, Rouge tells Shadow it's time for Chaos Control. Though in his current state, he's not powerful enough to perform one without a Chaos Emerald. That's when Tails brings up the fake emeralds and how they're generating Chaos Energy. Shadow's not a fan of using Pale Substitutions, but what choice does he have at this point? He initiates Chaos Control and easily wrecks the androids. Unfortunately, Shadow tapping into the fake emeralds' power had an unexpected side effect. Fake emeralds begin popping up, and Shadow can't handle that much power, and... Boom! The resulting explosion causes more fake emeralds to sprout, and the city's thrown into chaos. Uh, pardon the pun. Eggman quickly regains control of the situation by activating the emergency limiter and rebooting the system. Outside, everyone witnesses the calm, regroups, and assures Rouge that Shadow and Omega will be fine. As Eggman finishes rebooting the system, the new Diamond Cutters discuss what they just witnessed. Lanolin speculates if they can cause a bigger power surge and prevent Eggman from throttling it, Eggperial City is history. Too bad for the team, the recent power kerfluffle has altered their states. While they're still out of phase, they are now visible and Eggman spots them. He figures out that they've stumbled upon his spatial displacement trap, an earlier model as he explains. So he whips out the more advanced versions to get rid of the intruders. Whisper is the first to be caught. Tangle is next. Or would have been if Lanolin had not moved her out of the way. Before being trapped herself, Lanolin tells Tangle to inform Sonic and crew about what they've learned. As the devices close in on Tangle, she discovers she can face through the wall and bails from the tower, ending this issue. 
This is the first time we've seen Team Dark in any capacity since Chow races and Badnik bases, and the first time the full team is in action since the Metal Virus Saga 2-parter, Crisis City. You know, the one where Shadow got infected due to his pride? We'll come back to that. Based on Rouge's dialogue, she and the boys are apparently here for their own reasons. Which makes me wonder, did the group come here on their own, and it just happens to be when Sonic and his team were doing their thing? Given Rouge's profession, she would have found out about Eggperial City eventually. Plus, it would be pure coincidence, which can happen. On the other hand, she could have intercepted Sonic's SOS to the Restoration and assembled Team Dark to check out the place. And she's probably hiding that fact from Sonic. They did seem to arrive sometime after Tails and company did, and who knows how long until they showed up. Going back to Shadow, he still has his pride, but it seems it's been toned down a bit. You can see it most when Tails brought up the fake Emerald Energy, and Shadow reluctantly using said energy to initiate Chaos Control. Would the Shadow of the Metal Virus Saga act on useful intel that could help him? Well, you saw what happened there. To be fair, in the Metal Virus Aftermath, he admitted to Rouge that he done goofed. Perhaps after that humiliation, he's willing to be more receptive to any useful advice. I'm trying to justify his change in universe. Also, Shadow is a bit smarter, realizing that the Shadow androids have no real strategy and not rushing in head on to take them down. And when he does, he uses Chaos Control. Some might ask why he needed Chaos Emeralds, or something close, to do it when he could do it without one back in issue 6. Notice the dialogue here. He doesn't have enough energy to perform one without Chaos Emerald. I take it as Shadow using everything he has to hold the androids at bay for the moment, and the added energy would be necessary to take them down. Compare that to him using Chaos Control to just zip past Sonic. It boils down to how much energy he needs in a given situation. As for why he doesn't say, remove his inhibitor rings, a la Sonic 06? This is me speculating, but I would say the writers asked Sega if they could write it in, but Sega said no. Shadow may be better off than he was in earlier issues, but he still has a ways to go in my opinion. Baby steps and all. The presence of the Shadow androids themselves. First of all, kudos to Tango for recognizing them on the spot, since she got a POV view of them in action thanks to Whisper's mask. Second, everyone but Team Dark seemed unfamiliar with these machines. That actually tracks since it's only Team Dark that encountered these things in the past, specifically during the events of Sonic Heroes. Because they were stored similarly to Shadow, it made him question whether or not he was the real deal or not. Spoilers for Shadow the Hedgehog the game? He is, thanks to the canonical final story. Now that game also had Shadow androids, but thanks to its choose your path mechanic, who knows what elements are truly canon or not. As a nice visual touch, the Shadow androids have different colored markings, clearly an homage to the metallic shadows found in the Shadow the Hedgehog game's multiplayer. What is canon is using the fake emeralds to initiate chaos control, as previously mentioned. That's how Sonic got out of his death trap in Sonic Adventure 2. He was probably thinking of that moment right there. Shadow's act revealed a weakness to Eggperial City. It cannot handle massive power surges without Eggman regulating it, something the new Diamond Cutters learned, thus elevating their importance to the story. Once more, I have to praise Adam Bryce Thomas on the art. Combined with Evan Stanley's writing, we get moments like Sonic being annoyed by Team Dark's antics, Amy casually throwing Sonic aside to confront Rouge, Tango comforting Whisper during her breakdown, seriously, let the girl breathe before you pile on more trauma. Eggman snacking while watching the carnage, and once again, the image of an upside-down blaze in Silver's aura. There are two highlights I want to point out. The first is this image of Metal Sonic. As Eggman gloats about how great the Shadow Androids are, you can tell Metal's not pleased that these knockoffs are going to destroy Sonic instead of him. I bet he was happy they were destroyed by Shadow. And then there's the way Eggman presents himself during his confrontation with the new Diamond Cutters. Yet another reminder that underneath that goofy exterior is a sinister and creepy madman. We've reached the halfway point, and things have gone sour on the hero's end. Shadow and Omega are missing, and two-thirds of the new Diamond Cutters are incapacitated for the moment. But there is hope as Tangle escapes with information that could turn the tide. All she needs to do now is find Sonic's group. Can she make it in her current out-of-phase, yet visible state? We'll find out in Issue 60. See you then.
Shout out to Natalie Haynes for actually painting what would become an alternate cover to this issue. According to her, she took inspiration from a number of classical paintings, like The Fallen Angel by Alexander Cabano. Or is it Cabano? I can't pronounce these things. Anyone else want to see more covers like this? I do.